All right, so um, first of all, thank you all for being here. Um, today I'm going to explain you something about Smalldot in a mobile app. My name is Davan Plus. I'm a support engineer at Parity Technologies, and yeah, let's go. First and foremost, this is Pierre Krieger. Pierre Krieger, he is the mastermind behind Smalldot. He did an amazing job in, first of all, developing it, but also documenting everything. So if you want to learn about Smalldot, the Polkadot protocol, or client side of things, I highly recommend it. This is his talks from last year's Decoded. Um, so yeah, definitely check it out, and all props go out to him. So for the agenda, in order to explain you why Smalldot in mobile apps is such a big advancement, I need to explain what problems it solves, what Smalldot is. And in order to do that, we start all the way from the beginning, where we go over the internet and the current web, the blockchain solution, the current web with the blockchains and the problems that we're facing right now, Smalldot solution, how Smalldot does all of that stuff, and last but not least, I'll show you guys small dot on my iPhone 8. And yeah, I'll explain you why this is such a great step. So the internet and the current web. The internet, which is very simply put, just a bunch of computers exchanging information with each other. The current web, also known as Web 2.0, the data is owned solely by big companies. The problem is that they are the only one that has access to all this data, to all our data. They are the only one that has control over this data. As a result, if they are being shut down or they s decide to stop running, we don't have access to this data anymore, or even worse, this data gets lost. In addition, all this interaction that we do with these companies, with this data, is unverifiable. And for example, with the latest advancements in AI, it's good to know whether this photo that I'm checking on my social media app is actually put there by my friend and not by any random malicious person or AI or whatsoever. So the blockchain solution, instead of companies having all this data, this data lives on the blockchain. And if we zoom in on a blockchain, it is a network of nodes, nodes being computers, that, um, that all have a copy of the database of this blockchain. In addition, when we interact with this blockchain, we can talk to all these nodes. So the data access is very decentralized. A cool thing about blockchain is that we can own, we can own our data that is on the blockchain. And last but not least, when we interact with the blockchain, we can verify whether this piece of data is actually within the database. And how this will work, I'll explain you guys later. However, so, however, the current web with the blockchains has a few problems. First, is that when we interact, we only interact with a limited set of participants within this network. So again, a single point of failure and easily censored. In addition, we are not running any piece of software on our devices to be able to verify whether this data is actually the data that we requested for and if it's actually in the database. So a solution could be that we run a full node. Again, simply put, full node being the Polkadot uh, software, for example. We therefore join the network, can talk to all the nodes in the network, and we have the information to verify everything. There are only some problems with this, and that is it is a very resource-intensive program. It takes a lot of storage. And when we, use, when we want to use this for apps, we want it to be very responsiveness, responsive, uh, and therefore we have to run it 24-7, otherwise it's too slow, because these full nodes have the entire database, so it needs to verify all the blogs and all the transactions that are coming in. That is just too much. Let me introduce you Smalldot. 
Small dot is a light client, a client that can verify state, verify pieces of data that are in the, ba the, data da the database, holding only the minimal amount of information required. This makes it very light, very fast. So it's not holding the entire uh, copy of this database, only what it requires to get the information that you want and to verify that. So Smalldot is able to join a network, talk with all the nodes in this network, and also it is able to verify all the interaction. So how does Smalldot work? Let's unravel Smalldot. So in order to do that, we have to glimpse over the Polkadot protocol. And the Polkadot blockchain as well is a network of computers where in this network there is the active validator set. And the active validator set is selected by the nominated proof of stake system. They change over time and they earned the right to make changes to the blockchain by adding new blocks and also finalize these changes, by, which is done through voting. As for the latter, the result and proof of such voting rounds is called a justification. And a justification holds the information regarding which new blocks that are being finalized and also all the votes signed by all these active validators. So it can be used for uh, nodes that want to sync with the network and want to know what the latest finalized block is. What is the latest finalized state of the blockchain database. An important detail is that this justification must be included in the blocks where the active validator sets set changes. And this is exactly how Smalldot is, instead of verifying all the blocks in history, is able to do it way much faster by only verifying the changes to this active validator set. Because it, if, the, if it does this, it will have the latest validator set to verify the latest block, finalized block. This is called the warp sync protocol. So Smalldot doesn't have, is not interested in an entire block, which also contains all the transactions but it only is interested in the block header. And the block header contains the state root. And the state root is, you could see it as a resulting hash of this entire database on the blockchain. So if we have, this is a miracle tree, and we have all the pieces of data in the blockchain, and if we hash this data, which is a unique identifier of, of data, and we hash this again, and we do this again and again and again. The database of Polkadot is way bigger, but we will eventually result into a final hash, which we then compare, can compare, with the state root that we found in the latest finalized block header. So with all this information, I could request a note from the network like, hey, what is my balance? 19 tokens, and the node will also send me the hashes that I need to verify whether this piece of data is actually in the blockchain or in the database by comparing it with the state root. So, like any substrate-based chain, the cool thing is, is that the runtime code, the business logic of the blockchain, is also in the database. So we can verify and obtain the latest finalized runtime code. Polkadot holds all the latest parachain headers, so we can obtain the latest finalized parachain header. And maybe you understand it already, but if we can obtain that information, we can start verify any piece of data in any parachain database as well. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So. We also have the transaction route, and it functions the same. However, this is the resulting hash of all the transactions in the block. So we can also check new blocks 
and see if our transaction is in there and verify whether this is actually true. So, to sum up, Smalldot can obtain parachain headers, obtain data within the parachain databases, verify, sorry. It can obtain the runtime code, and with the runtime code, it can get the information regarding which validators are allowed to make a new block. So we can we receive all these new blocks after the finalized block, and we can verify the authenticity of them. Oh, we can validate transactions also with the runtime code, and we can verify the transaction status. So we can submit a transaction to Smalldot on our own device, on my mobile. It validates it, it sends it to the network, and then it checks the new blocks that it gets from being in the network and hearing all the gossips, and it can then verify whether it's added to a block, and when it's finalized and added to the blockchain database. Again, pretty cool. So let me show you Smalldot in action. So. Uh, so, uh, this is an iPhone 8, by the way. It's very crappy. And, um, yeah, can you share my screen? Does it work? It doesn't work. Fuck. Where's the camera? Where's the camera? I'll just... Zoom in. Zoom in, yeah? Okay. So, I'm going to open the app. Yeah. It's going to sync with the Polkadot relay chain. Kaboom. Sync with the chain, everything verified. Connected to two pairs at the moment. Not so good at the moment, but yeah. We connect to statements, currently asset hub. We are synced with statement. And let's switch to Kusama. Kaboom! It's so quick! It's so quick! That's so nice! Asset hub on Kusama. Yeah. So, um, yeah, thank you. You can switch back. So, um, yeah, this is just really cool. Uh, this means it works, it's fast. This is how everything should be working in the future. So, um, how did we do this? Uh, this is just in case. No, we don't need it. Okay, so uh, the repo is called Trappist Extra. Um, Trappist being a parachain that we use at Parity for development. Um, and we wanted to initially just connect Smalldot to this parachain, and it became some more. Um, but the repo contains of Flutter, which is a framework to build any app from a single uh, code base. So this app runs on Android. You can run it on your computer, Linux, whatever you, you want. Um, and it contains the Flutter Rust Bridge, which is a library that generates Dart code, which is used for Flutter from the Rust code. And in this project, we basically just initialized the small dot and we sent it some JSON RPC requests. Um, so the Flutter to Rust generated code from that to Dart. And the small dot repo contains backbone logic to understand substrate and polka dot, the light client, the small dot light client implementation, a prototype of a full node and also a JavaScript package uh, using Smallest Light Client implementation that works in the browser, Node.js, and Dino, or Deno. And people might know this as well because this is used for Substrate Connect, which allows you to connect to any Polkadot relay chain, Kusama, Parachain uh, in the browser. So, Smallest empowering mobile apps. Let's sum everything up. With the new apps that we are going to build in the future, there is no need anymore for a middleman. We will have apps that directly communicate with the blockchain. It will be trustless because we will verify everything. It is decentralized because we join the network and we can communicate with all the peers. And these apps, thanks to blockchain, will run on data where we own it ourselves. 
So, again, connecting to this beautiful blockchain, verifying everything, and we can do this for Polkadot, Kusama, Rococo, and any parachain already, as of now, in, a, in an iPhone 8. Um, this is how the true Web3 was envisioned. Thank you all for listening. And uh, yeah, if there are any questions. Yeah, of course, this is super cool. Thanks for the presentation, despite the technical challenges. Um, so I guess the typical use case while running your light client on the mobile phone would be that you issue a transaction, and you wait until it's finalized, and you get the block in which it's included that you can verify using the light client. Let's say this would take 18 seconds, I guess, on, on the relay chain or something like that. Um, do we have any numbers on what's the actual bandwidth consumption uh, that you know the mobile phone has to take, and also the you know data, anything like that, or not yet? No, not yet. Um, and I forgot to say this, but yeah, like this is uh, this was just a fun project that started it, and we just realized that okay, Smallnet is already ready to to be used in mobile apps. So it's just to make everyone aware of it and just to encourage everyone to start implementing it and like, yeah, we need the community to, to, do, to do this. Um, and of course, yeah, everyone. Yeah, that's, so, but that's no, good I, I, we haven't uh, done any thorough testing or whatever. Still super cool, thanks. Thank you. Pierre, by the way, I'm just a, uh, a learner here. <clears throat> any more questions? Um, how does small dot prevent attacks? I mean, sort of like eclipse attacks, if, if, if you uh, have. So, <laughs> um, well, first of all, it connects or so it receives all the information and it sends, for example, transactions to multiple nodes. And it uses the Kademlia protocol in like deciding which. Which not which nodes to connect to, but it, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not 100%, but it used the Kademlia protocol. Um, but I guess if they have multiple. So it has peers. been thought of um, how exactly, what that exactly means, I am, I will tell you afterwards. Okay, thank After, you. So thank we're you. going to Pierre. <laughs> how does the uh, project make money, or how do you have funds coming in? For the, for the app, you mean? How do you keep it going? That's a good question. So for the development, I would say, I think, you mean? To be honest, I, uh, I'm, I just started working, so I don't know all that business stuff. But uh, I would assume just how... So, for example, if you have a subscription, why not? Like, you're now using, for example, a social media app. Like, you can now trust that... We, all the photos that you see are actually posted by your friends, and everyone also owns this data. Um, I think that is already, I don't know, like a monthly fee worthy. Um, yeah, that is, yeah. <laughs> Any questions? All right. Thank you so much, right. Dan. Thank you.